Hi, I'm the Nuclear Rabbit and today I'm going to be playing a rabies druid because I've always been told that this is one of the, if not the, worst build in the game. So I want to find out how bad it actually is. I go ahead and start by creating my character and head off into the blood more. First level up I put a skill point into Poison Creeper. It's a synergy for rabies and it's also the speedrun strategy. Poison Creeper is a vine that follows me around and deals poison damage. Hence the name Poison Creeper. It used to be really bad but it's been buffed and has become one of the best early game skills in the entire game which you can see by it just easily one-shotting the counters i'm farming the counters for a tell and an ath rune because i want to make a stealth instead i find a set quilted armor in the black marsh on the way to the counters it's an arctic fur which has 10 resist all so i go ahead and wear that instead as i make my way towards the smith because the poison creeper has been clearing full areas on players 8 i make it to level 18 before even finding my way to Ontario, which means i get to use rabies from now on so what rabies does is you attack one monster and deal a ton of poison damage to it and it gets a red circle around it and when that red circle touches another monster it spreads the damage However, as you can see with this Ontario fight, it isn't very good against bosses. Giant mobs of things in a big open area however are its bread and butter. I very easily clear out the area surrounding the cube and pick up the Horadric box of chocolate. The Claw Viper temple shows me that the poison is also very bad against undead enemies. Luckily, those don't make up half the game or anything like that. I follow that up by killing Radamond, at which point I remember that I can just make a steel room with in a broad axe. So I make one of those and head towards Duriel, whom slowly but surely succumbs to my poison damage. And seeing how rabies doesn't stack, I go ahead and take a few normal swings at him as well. The spider forest might just be the rabies druid's favorite place to stay. There are tons of things here with low HP and wide open areas to spread the poison damage. I also end up finding my first ath rune here, meaning that I can upgrade from my artix fur to a stealth and give the artix to Artizir. After finding the jade figurine, I figure it is high time to make my way towards the spider cavern. Which I can't find. At all. Like it's nowhere to be seen. So I go around the spider forest looking for it, thinking I might have missed something. But it turns out I haven't. The only thing I end up finding is my flayer jungle skip at least, so that was nice. After about 30 minutes of running around like a headless chicken, I decided to just move on with my life and make it a problem for future me. So I start looking for the flayer dungeon. My search starts with going down from the waypoint in the flayer jungle. And what do I find? The spider cavern. Seriously, what is this crap? It's not even attached to the spider forest. In a twist of fate, I go ahead and bite the spiders and poison them for a change. Doesn't feel too good when it happens to you, and how does it? I pick up a rare ring in the flayer jungle, netting me some resistances, but more importantly, half freeze duration. My second ring comes as a reward for returning Ormus' kitchen knife. It's nothing too special, but hey, better than literal nothing. In the Kura's Bazaar I encounter another wolf and I cannot accept that. There can be only one, so I give chase and kill the would-be usurper. The ruined temple door is always a big gamble to get through, sometimes there is nothing waiting for you and sometimes everybody is waiting in ambush until you head in. Luckily I do make it out of the trap alive. The council are like the three musketeers with rabies for one and all for rabies and I go ahead and make my way past them. The first really dangerous moment of the run comes in the Durants of Hate with the dolls surrounding me while being poisoned. This makes the dolls literal time bombs, so I need to do some heavy kiting here, but I do end up making my way through. For the Mephisto fight, I just make sure he is always ticking down on poison damage, and I just dodge his attack. In Act 4, I find a Sigon's Belt. As I make my way towards Israel, the Plains of Despair are filled with souls, so I decide to lure my order of two skill points away from them into the City of the Dam, making it a much easier fight. My Hellforge nets me a Thal rune. The Chaos Sanctuary is another area where this build does well. There's lots of open space, everything is running around infecting each other, and things just end up dying of semi-natural causes very quickly. 
The Diablo fight is rough. See what I did there? A wolf, rough. It is hard to hit him and all of his attacks are very dangerous. I have a few close calls dodging the lightning as the demon slaps me around. But all I need to do in the fight is making sure that he stays green at all times. Cause as we learned from Kermit the Frog, it ain't easy being green. During one of my trips to town to refill on potions, I end up almost getting roasted by Diablo's lightning after being locked in place with a bone prison. I dodge some more fire and in the end decide to damage raise the demon to take him down. In Act 5 I go ahead and poison every single friend Shank has. The barbarians are locked behind a poison immune prison door so they are just going to rot and die instead of getting free this time. The moon lords get me stuck in a corner but luckily I manage to weave through them. In the frozen river I find a shale rune. So now I can go and buy a two socket shield to make a rhyme or resist, cannot be frozen and some magic find. I almost end up dying to the ancients. The throne of destruction should be renamed the behind the shed area cause I am getting shot down there. The minions of destruction out heal my poison so I have to lure them out. Bale should share my name cause he was hard to put down. But it was worth it though cause he ends up dropping a unique cudgel which is the dark clan crusher which has plus 2 skills, an attack rating and a bunch of other mods but it's as usual still worse than spirit. For now though I am going to use it, but I need to level up first, so I go into the terror zones until I am level 34. Once I reach the level, I equip the dark clan crusher, so far so good, normal went well. Let's see how nightmare goes. I am immediately saddened by seeing that the rabies only does one third of the damage to corpse fire. That is very low damage already, I had hoped it would wait to start sucking until at least hell, but no dice. Maybe I should infect them and start throwing glasses of water at them, maybe that will kill them faster. Diablo 2 can be very educational occasional as well, cause in the stony field I learned that even trees can get rabies. Two soul runes drop in the black march, which I can use to make a lore and an insight once I find the item bases. Never let anyone tell you quill rats aren't dangerous, cause I almost died to them right then and there. I get completely stuck in the barracks, but the rabies ends up ticking down fast enough for me to escape. The Ontario fight is just as riveting as I run circles around her while waiting for the poison to tick down. In Act 2 Nightmare I meet up with a holy freeze merc called Chalan. The maggot lair is actually really nice for a rabies druid. Everything lines up closely so they all get infected making it much safer than your usual kiting around. I go ahead and craft a ring with dual leech, strength, life and lightning resist. The undead in Talrush's tomb end up making things very messy, but the areas are big enough that I am able to just walk around them. With my HP crawling in my skin, with wounds that I luckily can heal, I make it to the altar, plop in the staff and go ahead for the Durial fight. The fight consists of inflicting rabies and running around, which seems to be a recurring theme for every single boss fight. There are a few close calls in there though, Duriel still hits like a freight train after all. He ends up dropping me a fired lightning resist belt that I am going to wear over the Saigons. Utilizing nothing but the safest of strategies in the spider cavern, I dive face first into a pile of spiders and start waving my face around like it's Saturday night. I almost get old yellowed by some fanaticism birds in the lower curas. And in the ruined temple I realize I'm very happy to be the first ever person that has rabies and can still read. My dances with dolls however continue in the sewers, things in here aren't dying to the rabies poison damage and seeing as how I think I'm a melee character, the dolls are nothing short of danger. I end up getting surrounded and wolfly make it out in time. Get it cause of barely making it out in time? Yeah, so bunny. During my travels I picked up antlers with plus 3 to rabies. As usual the council isn't much of a problem with a poison build, just a simple bite and down they go. In my overconfidence I go ahead and almost follow them down. Getting down to the double digit HP just a few seconds later. In the Durance of Hate a single doll almost ends my run, you know, just doll things. Mephisto ends up dropping one of the best mercenary weapons in the game. The Kelpie Snare. The amount of slow on this makes it so that a lot of the bosses are just bugged out and don't function anymore. I take a look in the pains of despair but decide that it is not for me and turn around again. But when the Poison Creeper has cleared all the souls I went ahead and collected my two skill points from Ishwal. 
The Hellforge nets me an Io rune. And I go ahead and craft an amulet for some resistances. The Chaos Sanctuary ends up being much slower than in normal because of all the poison immunes. Because I put up few points into fury, I am slowly but surely, but mostly slowly, getting through it. I do put rabies on the poison immunes though, because they do carry it around and infect the other monsters, allowing me to filter out all the stuff that isn't poison immune while clearing the Venom Lord. For the Diablo fight, I infect him with rabies but use fury for the most part, because poison damage against bosses is laughably bad. Diablo is also a great showcase of just how good the Kelpie Snare actually is. Look at that glacial movement. We might as well just take him to the back of the shed straight away. I have a very close call because of a bone prison, but as long as I dodge the firestorms, I can easily kill the demon and get rewarded with a Sasabi helmet for my mercenary. Dark Farron drops me a cleaver, and this is actually where I think I started messing up the run, but I'll talk and explain that later as I realize my mistake and start fixing it again. As always, a new weapon with new power comes with great responsibility, and is traditionally rewarded by getting my teeth kicked in by some moon lord. Following that up is yet another reminder that I'm still supposed to do the triangle run when Frozenstein drops the triangle shield. And the drops continue with a unique maul in the frozen tundra, which is another red herring for the run, putting me on the wrong path for the build. But Bone Snap is a contender for coolest item in the entire game, so it is forgiven. Things get tight during the Ancients, cause one of the problems with poison damage taking forever to kill things is that you need to kite around for a very long time, allowing more mistakes to happen. The fight ends a couple of months later, with Talik fighting the view while I hammer into him from behind. The Worldstone Keep is just electrifying as usual. Despite all of that, this character is actually able to take on Fanaticism Aura List of the Tormentor, which honestly is quite impressive. Only I was using Rabies to do it. At this point, I have to rely on Fury to get the job done. I mean, he isn't poison immune, but his resist is just so high that it doesn't matter. Same goes for Bale, who I just beat to death using a bone snap while Rabies pretends to be relevant. I want some more levels before I head into hell, so I decide to go ahead and almost die in the terror zone. I get a few more close calls in the terror zones before I make my way towards the Countess to complete the rooms for a hearth room worth, completing my path for misbuilding this character. I mean at this point I didn't realize it yet, but I was definitely going all the wrong way with the gear. With the level grind and room work done, I make my way into hell. Which starts by improving my resist with an armor with some runes in it, gambling some boots and running out of gold because of it. I make my way through my personal favorite kind of wood and decide that this is way too dangerous, so I head back into the nightmare zones, where I of course find straight up better boots, because that's how this game works after all. But the biggest find is a unique Queeras, which is one of the best sort of self found armors in the game. It's a durial shell. With its resist, life cannot be frozen and a pile of defense, it's an armor that you can wear until the end of time. Well, except if it's ethereal, like this one. Well, guess we are on a timer now. I was going to farm more in Nightmare, but with the clock ticking, it's time to get on with it in hell. I start off by stealing the smith's hammer. He seems to disagree though, as he almost bashes my head straight into my spine with a single swing. The rabies also really isn't helping anymore at this point, so I guess the stories are true, and it is bad. So I have to play ring around the smithies for a long time before it goes down. My life total gets dangerously low against Antario, cause usually when you are playing a low damage character, you are a tank, compensating all of your low damage with lots of health and durability. But none of that is true on this run, we aren't so much a wolf as we are a cute little puppy trying to cuddle our way through hell. 
after Act 1, I am down to 112 of the 126 durability of my Durial Shell. This is going to be very tight, like me. In the Maggot Lair, everything is poison immune and in the way, so I have to just fury my way through, which goes at a glacial pace that I almost wish that I would just get taken out back instead. The Death Beetles I do end up sending to Lucy in the sky with her diamonds. In the Claw Viper Temple, I end up luring everything away from the stairs and kiting around until I can get up to the amulet. The Arcane Sanctuary was just a big waiting on the rabies game. And I might have mentioned this once or twice before on the channel, but I am not a patient man in the slightest. So after all the waiting through the Maggot Lair and the Arcane Sanctuary, I am done. I am done being safe and responsible, and it is time to get a move on. So I start running through the Tar Rusher's tomb. In the Act 3 jungle, I find the Jade figurine and go ahead and buy the spider. Sizak turns out to be the easy part of the spider cavern as I have to wade my way through an absolute crap ton of lampreys to make my way to the eye of the spider. For some reason in the Flayer jungle, my rabies just does not trigger. I don't know what's going on here, but for the life of me, I couldn't get the rabies to start. It's not an attack rating thing either, like I thought at first, cause my fury did end up just clearing them out, but the rabies was just done and noped out I suppose. In the Flayer dungeon, I bravely look at how Chalan deals with the dolls. Storm tree ends up just kind of walking the wrong way away from me, so I decide to just move things along and head into the sewers, where Isog Riffling almost gets the job done. After picking up the brain, I run through the rest of the sewers because it's all just dolls and I can't deal with them at all. Apparently, Trevinkle is a dog free zone because I get hard blocked at the door, so I do some kiting and make my way in despite them. I almost go down like a bag of puppies in the river against the council, getting smacked down to just a sliver of my HP. Luckily, the feeling's mutual and they end up going down to rabies and fury. I run through the Durance of Hate with my tail between my legs as the might dolls show me who's boss. Level 2 is even worse and I end up getting sandwiched between the dolls and have to escape. Which means I will have to run the Durants a second time, but surely the second time won't be worse. Well, don't call me Shirley because it's worse. Oh my god, it's so much worse. The Plains of Despair apparently also has a no dogs allowed policy now as the door is just fully blocked. And one of the habits I've picked up over the years is to always check my lightning resist before walking in there. And I'm immediately reminded of why I picked up that habit. Cause my resist isn't great, I go ahead and reroll. Second attempt I am greeted by souls again, but as you can tell by how long it took for me to upload this video, this run took forever. So I decide to push on and just lure Israel back so I can collect my skill points again. However, the souls have other plans as I get stuck and heavily shot at with lightning, I have no choice but to get out again. Third attempt, the game just laughs as it pulls down its pants in my living room and just shits on my kitchen floor while maintaining eye contact as I meekly whimper away and re-roll again. Fourth attempt, I finally don't roll souls, making it easy for me to isolate Isual and get out of there as quick as I can. And quick is a choice of words here because this isn't very quick at all, because apparently hell is all just a dog free zone now. At the door for the city of the damned, I am blocked again. Luckily, nothing is poison immune, so it's just a waiting game. Again. I wish. I was kidding. Because even though this looks slow to watch at, it was even slower to play, and it's going to get worse. Much worse. The river of flame isn't too bad, cause the rabies just pulls through, so despite its laughable damage at this point, it's dealing damage at least. My hellforge gets me a malrune. 
And with that, it is time for the worst area in the game for this run. The Chaos Sanctuary on paper looks amazing. You get a wide open area, tons of things to infect with rabies and that should be all you need. However, my rabies damage is so low that I need to infect something, run back again, wait a few seconds, run back again, infect something again and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. I needed to do this for every single goddamn monster in the Chaos Sanctuary. Every single one of them took at least three infections before dying of the rabies. Most of them even took more. The Chaos Sanctuary on its own took me three hours. For some perspective, the double monsters barbarian went through an hour faster than the rabies druid did. Seriously, this build should be ashamed of itself. Oh, and did I mention I am just also getting my ass kicked in close combat here. It's not clean or anything. My health bar has decided that after its dance with the wolves, it would like to reincarnate as a yo-yo for this bizarre adventure. The Diablo fight was easy because crushing blows are a thing. Thank you, Bone Snap. As I got stuck behind the barbs, I got to thinking, how in the world can this build be this bad? What is going on? And then I realized, I have been doing it all wrong. I'm used to shapeshifting builds being melee builds, but the rabies druid isn't a melee build at all. It's a caster that has to connect. There's a very big difference. In Diablo 2, you have two different types of builds, melee and good ones. I mean, builds that want crushing blow or builds that want plus two skills. And because I'm used to playing a fury druid, which is a melee build, I built this character in a way that it gets crushing blow with a bunch of melee weapons like a head striker, a putrid purple, or the before mentioned bone snap. And that is just, well, wrong. I should be focusing on plus the skills. So I go ahead and put on the plus 3 to rabies helm, like I should have from the start. I also go ahead and use the mile rune I got from the hellforge to make a rain armor. I also go ahead and socket a broadsword and make a spirit. I use my second socket quest on my helm. Unfortunately, I get unlucky here and only get one socket, because blue items get either one or two sockets. I decide to put a Thor rune in the socket. The tutorials got down to 46 out of 126 over 4 x so it probably would have lasted long enough, unlike me. But now Shalon gets a nice new armor. With all of those upgrades, I still almost died to Eldritch. Who draws me a serpent skin armor? It's a skin of the Viper Magia, and it can get 20 to 35 resist all. A monarch drops shortly after so I decide to go ahead and pay Lazuk a visit again. I follow that up by making a spirit for myself and a bulwark for Chalan. To wear my spirit I need 156 strength, so off to a car we go for a respec. And with all of my new plus 2 skills I end up with 11k rabies damage. I've almost tripled my damage and at this point I figured if I'm in for a puppy I might as well be in for a pound. So I go ahead and save game. My good rare ring comes early though just on the way through the quest. But even despite tripling my damage I have some bad news. I'm still getting my ass kicked by Treehead Woodfist. I end up having to play circle around the Treehead while the poison dwindles down on his life total. Which to be fair it does end up doing much faster than it used to do. In Act 5 I'm actually too shorting things now, which while better, still isn't great either, but at least it's workable. Honestly though, this run has had a very weird effect on me. On the one hand, I never ever want to see this flaming pile of dog shit again. On the other hand, it has made me really want to do a shared stash run with it, to see if I can make it any good. I'm just curious, would that be something people would enjoy to see? In the meanwhile, I've made it through bullet hell and into the Ancients fight. And all I can say about the Ancients fight is that it took 30 minutes and was extremely boring. All that happened was that it took forever for things to to take down and die. Worst thing of the whole fight was that I even almost ran out of potions towards the end of it, which would have had me redoing the fight. Luckily I escaped that dance with the wolves. I bravely, slowly, inch my way terrified through the world stone keep. However, for once in this run I get lucky and find the waypoint very quickly. Having made my way to the world stone keep, I thank my lucky diadem of the 12 stars and become a wolf in the throne room. However, I quickly realize that this isn't lucky at all. The throne room is filled to the brim with salt. I have two choices here, re-roll or go through them. At this point, I just want this run to be over, so I decide to go through them. One by one by one. I'm just happy this area isn't as big as the Chaos Sanctuary, because this would have taken hours as well.
Luckily, the minions weren't much of a fight and Chalance Wustaf just piled a bunch of slow and with that we just clown on Bale and complete the run. As I'm showing my gear and build in the background, I want to thank everyone who is still here for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing or even becoming a member, it all really does help more than you think. I never would have thought that after 2 years of doing this I will be able to make a living out of it. But here we are and I want to thank all of you for allowing me to go for it. With that being said, thank you all for watching, enjoy the rest of your day and bye bye.